Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. You are listening to Love Living Radio, Ignite Your Whole Being with Emily Perkins. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific as Emily sheds a radiant light of love on the beauty and the power that resides within you. Inside the power of love is the possibility of healing wounds and transforming your stories. Can you feel the call of your spirit? What would igniting your whole being look like? Discussing love in all its forms through conversations that provoke awareness, curiosity, and expansion, Emily shares the unlimited power of love. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Love Living Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. I am so excited about our chat today. We have Matthew Butcher on, and he is a dear friend um, who I actually met through a dating website about a year ago or a little bit more than a year ago. Um, And he's this amazing, fascinating human. Uh, He's going through graduate school at the New England School of Acupuncture right now. Um, And he has this really cool background in energy work, um, Brazilian and also Reiki. Um, And he's done a lot of really cool work with plant medicine, um, in particular with two that we're going to talk about today, which are ayahuasca and iboga. And Matthew is really going to be kind of like the expert on this one because I know very little about it, but have always been so fascinated by it, which is why I was so excited to have him on the show to kind of talk a little bit about what they are exactly. Like so many people have asked me like, what is ayahuasca? I don't even know what it is. Um, And what you can use it for some of the misconceptions around the process and the use of this beautiful plant medicine. And then uh, a little bit about Matthew's story himself and how he works with it. So um, I'm so very excited to introduce you to Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Emily. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Very flattering. (laughs) Oh, it's also true. And I love our story. Like I was thinking about it today, actually, when I was prepping and thinking, you know, getting my headspace ready for this show. And I was, you know, I think it's so cool that we met (laughs) on a dating website, which, you know, is not a typical dating website. It's called Meet Mindful. Um, And I have such a vivid memory of that first time I saw your picture. And I was like, oh, this guy looks really cool. Um, And we've, (laughs) you know, since then been able to kind of cultivate a really cool friendship, Mm -hmm. Um, one which I'm very, very grateful for. But um, yeah, I'm just so grateful that you're here and I'm grateful that you're open to having this conversation to kind of um, enlighten a little bit, both myself, honestly, and whoever's lucky enough to be listening to you about what this what this beautiful, cool plant medicine stuff actually is. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. And yeah, where would you like to start? Well, I guess I would love to know, like, what led you to plant medicine and in particular to, to ayahuasca and aboga and that when working with those specific kinds of plant medicine, like what, what drew you to that? Um, well, that's, that's an interesting story because I'd worked a little bit with uh, psychedelic mushrooms in college, um, not in a very like ritualistic sort of way because, you know, undergraduate in college is just kind of in that experimentation phase. Um, I actually didn't get introduced to the plant medicines until about 2012 when I was through hiking the Appalachian Trail and I was met this gentleman who was from Canada who introduced me to the whole idea of plant medicines. I'd heard about DMT before um, through some friends in college and through the movie Enter the Void. Um, But I never heard anything about ayahuasca. And then this 65-year-old gentleman from Toronto tells me about it and just kind of I hear about it and I get more and more interested. And that's kind of when that exploration first started for me. And then shortly thereafter, in November 
2012, I ended up doing my first ceremony and it was, it was very powerful. That's for sure. It was, I had no idea what I was getting myself into and it was absolutely beautiful. Mm, Yeah. I feel like that's a really common story for people like that. They have no idea what they're getting themselves into, but they just trust that for whatever reason, they're drawn to, to do that kind of work and ceremony and Mm -hmm. then walk away with some kind of profound experience. Um, What do you feel like for you from that first ceremony was the most profound for you? Um, Just, I remember kind of the morning after the first ceremony, just kind of, I went back to my hotel room the morning after, took a nap, woke up and I was like, I was just so grateful to, you know, have a body and be embodied and be in this physical manifestation of life. Um, Cause I went up to the trail kind of trying to figure stuff out, kind of, kind of regain some of that appreciation for life. Cause I was prior to that kind of perhaps could say depressed working as a financial advisor in Philadelphia. And I just wasn't, you know, my heart wasn't full. If you know what, what that means. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do know what that means. So I guess what I heard is that like what you walked away from, from that first ceremony was feeling embodied and being grateful for your body and with a little bit of a fuller heart. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, This kind of gave me a greater appreciation for where I was and kind of like my family even. Um, Now that was still the, the first two nights of ceremonies and, at the time, I was still kind of working with an Adderall prescription that I had from college. And so one thing with the plant medicines, especially ayahuasca, is like you'll, people will have these wonderful experiences in ceremony. And I'm not like, that's this isn't to discredit them, but that's only the beginning of the work. It's kind of like going to class and then you have to go home and really embody the homework and the lessons and kind of make those changes that you want for yourself at home. Because it's one thing to have the experience, but if you can't integrate it into your day-to-day life, I kind of question what the, what's the point. Mm. Yeah, I think that's such an important point to make. Um, and I'm so glad that you brought it up because I think a lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to go and do this ceremony and it's just going to change everything. And I'm going to be totally reborn and transformed and you know, like the ceremony and the medicine will just do all the work. And I think that that's a really cool piece to bring into the, to the picture of plant medicine and ceremony and ayahuasca um, to like, actually be like, Hey, this is, this is the door, the opening. And then you have to walk through and continue your journey into yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. That's a, I think that's a really cool point to make. Um, I also like, <laughs> when I was talking about, I think talking to you about ayahuasca that first time, and I first kind of sort of heard about it and sort of heard about what it was about and the ceremony and how the process or what the process can give you, because there really is no one way that the process can go. <laughs> mm-hmm. But when I first, I guess, got introduced to ayahuasca, which is in Costa Rica when I was, um, doing my first solo trip about a year and a half ago. Um, And the energy worker that I was working with does really cool guided retreats. Um, I was like, I have no idea what it actually is. And to be totally honest, I didn't actually know what I knew. I knew it was a plant medicine, but I didn't know what it was until Mm -hmm. you and I sat down and had dinner like a month ago. And I was like, so what is ayahuasca? (laughs) So maybe let's, let's like let everybody know, like what exactly is ayahuasca? Sure. So now in the Amazon jungle basin, like lots of different tribes use it. There's different. So within the different traditions, there's the Colombian Yahe tradition, the Peruvian uh, Shipibo tradition, which uses the term ayahuasca. Then there's the Brazilian traditions. And then there's also Daime, which is a more kind of modern tradition that's kind of come about in the last 150 years. Um, Traditionally, ayahuasca is just the label for the tea using two separate plants. One is a vine um, and the other is a leaf. Um, now the 
I still struggle sometimes with the pronunciation of the vine, uh, but it, the short version is B. cappy, um, which is the ayahuasca vine, and then the leaf comes from the chacruna plant, um, P. viridis. Um, I forget the actual scientific name, but the leaf is what contains the DMT, which is the compound that'll give kind of the light and the visions uh, to with the experience at times. And then the vine contains um, MAOIs, MAOI inhibitors that allow the DMT to be processed orally and make it up through the blood-brain barrier. Um, okay. So that is at its root, that is the essence of ayahuasca. Now, there might be some groups or traditions where they might mix in other plants or different ratios of the plants to have specific effects. Um, so yeah, there's that's a whole other world, but like just traditional ayahuasca itself is just the combination of those two individual plants. Got it. Okay, so it is a tea made from a vine and a leaf mm -hmm. that combined properties of DMT and MAOI inhibitors. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, because I always, I always was like, I don't even, is it a mushroom? Is it a bark? Is it, you know, so like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just nice to know, like, what is it? It's, so it is a tea, everybody. For those of you who are curious and didn't know, like me, it is a tea made from a leaf and a vine. Yeah. Um, and just cool. one thing to note with the, there are different kind of recipes that are passed down through different families and traditions. So some teas might be a little more bitter. Some might be cooked down to a point where they might taste like honey. So there is a very kind of broad spectrum as to what the tea will also taste like. Mm, cool. I didn't know that either. That's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Um, and I kind of actually want to know more about that, but we're going to take we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, maybe like a little bit about the the variations because that seems really fascinating to me in terms of like how you experience or how how it happens with your body according to the different mixes, mm -hmm. and we're also going to talk a little bit about what iboga is and a little bit more about all this fun, juicy stuff and what ceremonies are about and all, all there's so much more to come. So stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about plant medicine. Finding success and putting minds to work. With the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, Rudy Racine will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. The knowledge book currently studied in 39 countries and 15 languages around the world accelerates our evolution, takes us out of depression, offers universal truth, protects us, and makes us stronger, both spiritually and physically. So if you are interested in the knowledge book, visit usa.thenowledgebook.net and tune in to the Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Healing has a ripple effect 
One person's healing affects everyone around them. This is where the power of sharing our stories can be so important. Tune in to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Megan provides you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. Enact the power of radical change. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking with Matthew Butcher about plant medicine, in particular, ayahuasca. Um, It's such a fun and cool topic to me. To me, it's so fascinating. Plant medicine is just like Mother Earth's like magic that she just offers to us um, in all sorts of amazing healing ways. And ayahuasca has always been something that's kind of intrigued me and scared me and... uh, like it seems like this big mystery a little bit to me. Um, and it's been something that's been coming into my radar a lot over the past year, which is why I'm so excited to have Matthew here talking about it. Um, and before the break, we were talking a little bit about um, the different variations and how you can prepare it and how, you know, it can taste different, which I had no idea. Um So Matthew, what do you think? Like, cause of course the sweet one is the one that, kind of interested me. I was like, Ooh, sweet. Okay. (laughs) But, um, I was curious, like, how does the variation in the teas affect your experience with the plant medicine? Um, so the, the best examples that I can give would just be from my own personal experience. Um, I've had the privilege to work with a couple of different tradition, uh, traditions, um, with the Colombian, Taita traditions and lineage, and then also the more Brazilian. Um, What I've experienced from the Colombian traditions, and then this isn't, I don't want this to go as like a broad statement across all of the traditions and all their teas, but some of the teas that I have experienced have been a little more physical. They work a little bit deeper um, into more of like your intestinal and lower abdomen is a much more physical healing. Um, whereas some of the Brazilian teas might be a little bit lighter, um, might have a little more visuals just depending on how they were cooked. Uh, Brazilian, those, the difference in those is that the Brazilian tea might've had more chacruna or DMT in it. And the Colombian tea in my particular instance, um, had more vine and maybe another additive or two in it. So it would be a little more physical. Um, so that's just one of the differences as well and depending on how they're cooked as well sometimes a particular brew might have the intention for some for the participants to physically get well um so that is also one option that can happen depending on how what intentions are put into the tea when it's made right That makes sense. And when you say physical, like, because there are so many misconceptions about ayahuasca. And I think when people hear it, their first thought is, oh, you're going to be pooping and barfing your brains out. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so like, what, when you say physical, like, what does that encompass? Um, so yeah, so the, the physical getting well, it could be exactly what you imagined of you physically purging. Um, now that isn't, this is one thing that I kind of want to cover is that it's not guaranteed. It's not like you're guaranteed you're going to throw up or have to run to the bathroom or whatever. Um, personally, I didn't have a purge for the first, I don't know, six months to a year of working with the medicine. So it was kind of lost on me that that was something that could happen. Um, 
But yeah, so that is one way that it's believed that the, the medicine works with you to kind of release old stagnant energies um, or emotions or as you're processing different things in your psyche and in your energetic field, that's one way to release it. Um, in time, people may discover that there's other ways to work with the energy and move it so they don't have to have a physical purge, whether that's dancing or singing or just learning to breathe through it and let it go in other ways. Mm. Okay. So it's not a guarantee, but it may be something that happens for you. And if it does, it's just an energetic release. Yeah. And it's totally normal as well. Sometimes, you know, I remember one instance where I ate watermelon right before a particular ceremony and then that caused a physical purge. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the watermelon did or like the combination of the watermelon and then the tea? Yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, we'll never know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. What do you what do you think are some of the other misconceptions? Like I think that people have this idea that it's and it's become a little bit trendy. You mm -hmm. know, and I just, one, like the way, I can hear it in the way that you talk about it, that it's this medicine. And I love the words that you said, you said getting well, you know, that it's, that that is the intention of this beautiful tradition is to actually use it as a form of healing. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are like some of the other big misconceptions that you would love to just like maybe shine a little light on? <laughs> um. So I guess one of the misconceptions is, I would say, especially with the, the trendiness, if it's just a bucket list item, um, I would say think very carefully and be very intentional as to why somebody might want to do it. Um, and, you know, I was... I going into it was still a little ignorant, but I had a particular intention. I was going through a particular time in my life when I was trying to transform my life. So if somebody is trying to transform their life, have a breakthrough or kind of discover something within themselves that they might have not known before, then I'd say it's something that I would support taking a look at and considering. Um, but it's not something that I would just say jump into it lightly um, because, you know, it, it shows you things about yourself and oftentimes the, the more difficult journeys come when we are either choosing to ignore or not look at a certain aspect of ourself that we need to see or go through. Mm. Uh, so just be sure, treat it with a little respect and have be humble with the medicine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess what I hear in that too, is that like, um, how you come into it, you know, if you, if there's resistance to, mm -hmm. to your own process or if there's an openness and willingness to transform or, a respect for the medicine itself and a respect for your own process that it'll probably affect how you experience it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Your intent and your psyche beforehand going into it are important. And I will say just from, I don't know, I did go through my kind of like, I don't know, cowboy phase, but sometimes the medicine does also reward courage. Like if you're fearing fearful of it, um, because I feel a lot of the plant medicines, they're here to make us look at our fear and see, like, is it does this serve me? Is it rational? Um, so there is also a certain element, I feel, of having that courage to face the medicine and face yourself and see what it shows you. Yeah. Yeah, and I am so glad that you brought that up too because I think there's a ton of fear around ayahuasca. Almost every person that I talked to about this show in particular, when I said we were going to be talking about ayahuasca, they were like, oh my God, yeah, well, well you know, they're curious, but there's also a ton of fear around it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm really glad that you brought that up because I think 
kind of like what you said, you know, like it, it does take some courage to be able to look at our shadow, to be able to look at the stuff that's hiding underneath. Mm -hmm. And especially with the aid and the assistance of something that might kind of bring it up a little quicker than normal. Mm -hmm. Um, and a little bit more powerfully, you know, like it, it, it's almost impossible, I guess, not to see, not to be with your stuff when you're mm -hmm. go intentionally going through a process with plant medicine like ayahuasca. Um, but I also hear like some like uh, lean in a little bit to the fear, mm -hmm. you know, in what you just said that like, yeah, the fear might be there, but to, to lean into it with a little bit of courage. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, standing at the like the, the edge of a cliff in a way. It's like you're right on the edge and it's just, if you can be calm and like breathe into yourself and relax and kind of realize, no, you're standing firmly on the edge. You're not going too far over the boundaries. And granted, sometimes with the medicine, you might have a little too much tea and you might feel overwhelmed, but it's a, it's a learning experience it's a relationship as you learn how you react and how you work with the medicine and how the medicine works with you it's so it's not because each experience is going to be different every time mm. yeah and that's i think another misconception is a lot of people think oh i'm just going to do this once and it'll be this transformative experience and then never do it again so i guess letting people know that this can actually be like a tool for healing, an ongoing tool rather than just like a one-time scary, crazy experience, which I think is the misconception that a lot of people have. Yeah, um, for sure. It can be a multiple time thing. Like each individual has a different relationship with ayahuasca or daime or the medicine. And some people might need to go for, I don't know, a couple of years until they resolve what they need. Some people might be, a little, I don't know if who you wouldn't want to call more fortunate, but they might have less stuff to work through or they get what they need in a few sessions. So it's really individual based depending, I'd say perhaps on where they are at as an individual and also how kind of developed they are as a soul in a way. Mm, cool. Yeah. Oh, yummy. I'm loving us. I'm so <laughs> loving this. It's so cool. <laughs> it's fascinating to me. You know, I was actually, I was really, really looking forward to this conversation. So we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Iboga and um, a little bit about like what it is, how to work with it, and maybe a little bit more about ayahuasca. We'll see. But I guarantee you it's going to be fun and really exciting and pretty fascinating. So Stay tuned. We'll be back in a little bit. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. We have an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in weekly every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as we, Jason and Patricia, discuss what's truly holding you back. We offer you the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time be living lighter. For more information about Living Lighter, visit www.livinglighter.org. 
interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. Are you ready to make deep, lasting, transformative changes? Then tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio for Susanna Jameson's hit show, Love Light Sound Radio. During her show, Susanna inspires and supports spiritually and health-conscious individuals all over the world to reconnect with their heart, their inner peace, and balance. Love Light Sound Radio. Transformation happens here now. For more information, visit SusannaJameson.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Welcome back to Love Living Radio. I am here talking to Matthew Butcher, a friend and I guess kind of colleague um, and fellow spiritual healer on our path and journey. Um, And we are talking about ayahuasca and plant medicine and a little bit about we've talked kind of already about what some of the misconceptions are, what it is. um, And then now we're going to kind of jump into, a, I guess, correct me on this, Matthew, but kind of like a sort of like a sister, a sister plant or a sister medicine, um, iboga. So Matthew, what, what is iboga and how is it different from ayahuasca? So iboga is a plant medicine from Western Africa, specifically uh, Gabon, and it also grows in Cameroon and the Congo in some locations. Um, So totally different continent. Um, It's often believed to have a more masculine energy um, compared to ayahuasca, which is oftentimes considered to be more feminine. Sometimes ayahuasca is called grandmother and aboga. Um, In certain circles, I've heard it called like uncle, like uncle aboga in a way. Um, and aboga come is actually the, the root bark of the plant from the tabernathy aboga. Um, and there's a bunch of other tabernathy, I guess, species or genus that also contain aboga and some of the, al- the active alkaloids in the root bark. Um, so similar to South America, the ayahuasca tradition has been used for thousands of years by the the pygmies and the other indigenous groups of Western Africa um, with a very beautiful, in-depth tradition built around the use of it um, for healings and other forms of wisdom keeping. Mm, Okay. So it's a little bit more masculine versus ayahuasca, which is a little bit more feminine. Um, and, you know, before, during the break, we were kind of chatting a little bit and you said that there's sometimes a little bit more fear around it, that it can be a little bit more intense. And I guess, like, how does that show up? What does that mean? Um, well, in, in some of the, so with some of the plant medicines, people often say it's like, they feel like a calling, like they're called to work with a particular medicine. Um with a boga, there seems to be, even with some like experienced people that I know have drunk ayahuasca for years or daime or yahe, um, there's still like almost a level of they don't feel called to it or there's fear around it because um, I guess it's a very different vibration. It's a African like very ancient energy, um, and I guess some of the fear could come around the fact that. From a full flood dose, for instance, it can last 
up to 72 hours with After Effects lasting up to a week. Um, and you know, I guess some of the fear could also come from the fact that I know in the initiation, some of the initiation ceremonies that I was a part of, there was a point where you're kind of at the peak of your experience and you get seated. Traditionally, it would be in front of a fire, but they also use the mirror. So you're sitting there in front of the mirror looking at yourself while you're communing with the, the spirit of the plant and kind of seeing all the different aspects of yourself in the mirror and kind of working with yourself that way. Um, so it's, you're both literally and figuratively, you know, staring at, staring into the, the, like your heart and your soul. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So a little more raw in, in a sense, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so fascinating. Cause it, it just brought up, um, a, a memory that I just had. I, I just had of my first journey experience with, uh, with acid actually. And mm-hmm. it was a very intentional ceremony and went into it really with, with a lot of consciousness, um, around where I wanted to go with it. And I remember at the end talking to my friend who kind of was there to kind of guide me. She had a lot more experience with it. Um, and she, I kept telling her like, I need a mirror. I need a mirror to be able to see me to, to act. but for me, it was a different experience. I was actually so out of my body and so disconnected, um, and ungrounded that I actually needed the mirror to be like, Hey, you're you come back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but the use of the mirror is such a cool way of like, like you said, like figuratively and physically seeing your heart and soul and your physical body all at once. Um, so that's, just kind of piqued my interest as you said that a little bit, but, um, so forgive me. Did you, did you say already like what Boga itself is, is, is it a tea also? Um, so yeah, there's a typically, um, so there's, so I, I guess I'll expand a little bit more. So a Boga is the word for just the, the root bark itself. Um, it has, I guess in the last, I don't know how many years, it's become more popular to use ibogaine, which is a single alkaloid extract from uh, the root bark um, in various clinics, whether they're in Canada, Mexico, um, Costa Rica, for helping people break, whether it's opioid addictions, other behavior patterns. Um, So there's the traditional use of it, which is a boga, which is where you're consuming the root bark. Um, occasionally, they'll brew it into a tea as well for um, other physical healings. Um, and in the West, it's ibogaine, which is kind of the extract that's been put into like a capsulated pill form. Mm, got it. And what is, so the capsulated pill form, is that what they use with the opioid addiction and and um, I can't and, say across the board for all the clinics and all the, the different locations, um, but the the ones that I'm aware of, um, the, so I'm affiliated with some more of the traditional ones that still have the shamanic roots coming from the Buiti and Gabon. Um, they will use the, the root bark itself, and then they'll also use some of the, the extracts, which can allow the patient or the the journeyer to have a deeper experience without having to go through the physical challenge of consuming powdered root bark. Because what is the physical challenge of having to consume it? Like it it just, it's not, doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste good. You're trying to literally eat sawdust. Okay. Got it. (laughs) Yeah. Got it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Um, the, the, Opi- the opioid addiction in in our country and 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 how this could be used as a medicine is super fascinating to me. Um, but I'm conscious of the fact that we're about to take a quick break. But I just want to let people know, like, 
that's where we're going next. And it's going to be really cool. And it's going to be really fun. So um, stay with us. There's way more to talk about. Um, and if you haven't already gotten like some awesome information about this, like this, this plant medicine is really a gift to us, you know, like, and, and if, if we haven't already kind of conveyed that it is this beautiful tool for healing, that is the essence with which we are trying to um, communicate. So uh, when we talk next, after this quick break, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use these plant medicines or how they're being used currently to create some change, whether it's personally or with opioid addiction. Um, they're really such a beautiful gift to us. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit karenbenton.com. Love Living Radio Ignite Your Whole Being with Emily Perkins is a show for those looking to explore the sparkling magnificence of their inner selves. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific as Emily sheds a radiant light of love on the beauty and power that resides within you. Discussing love in all its forms through conversations that provoke awareness, curiosity, and expansion, Emily shares the unlimited power of love. For more information or to listen to this show, visit lovelivingholistics.com. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? <laughs> really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Practice living in wholeness with the body tune-up. Six classes for $89 designed for radical self-healing and self-regeneration. Heal the deepest root of any challenge. The mental body was programmed in negativity, not good enough, separate from source. You're too much, you'll never make it. The emotional body holds all the pain and trauma of emotional suppression, all the pain from this life and life's past. The spiritual body is the place you connect with your higher power, your higher self, with the image and likeness of the one. The physical body houses and expresses the other three bodies every day. Go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Evolve, become a practitioner. We need to heal, integrate, and bring into wholeness and harmony the physical body, addressing all the other bodies in order to live in our true, authentic nature. Welcome back. We're talking about plant medicine. We're talking about ayahuasca and iboga. And we are here with Matthew Butcher, um, who I just absolutely adore and has been my guide in terms of these two plant medicines, especially ayahuasca, which I've had so many questions about over the past year of getting to know him. Um, and I've just loved hearing his stories. I've loved hearing his philosophy and way of working with this beautiful plant medicine and healing source. So um, welcome back. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Emily. <laughs> um, so when we left, we were talking about Iboga. Mm -hmm. 
and how it has a little bit more of a masculine energy versus the ayahuasca, which has a little bit more of a feminine energy um, and can have like a little bit of a longer experience is what I heard also. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, like you mentioned a little bit about opioids. So how do people work with Iboga when it comes to opioid addiction? So it's been used more currently in uh, various clinics for detox and rehabilitation. Um, part of that is due to the fact that it's been shown to show long-term reduction of withdrawal symptoms. Um, then it's, I mean, I can't really like speak enough about it. It's kind of sometimes hard to put into words. Um, so typically my personal experience, when I was in Africa, there was a gentleman there from, I believe, London, um, who last, last time he, I guess, had heroin was before he got on the plane and we're going back in the jungle to, for, and he came to Gabon to work with the medicine to help him overcome his addiction. So he did it a little more perhaps raw than some, some people would, but he, Aboga has been shown to kind of significantly reduce the withdrawal symptoms and the struggles that go along with that. So someone can perhaps make the transition to being clean. I don't know if I would necessarily say easier, but it's a different way to do it. Um, this is something that I recommend if people have heard of it or are interested in to do um, a lot more research into it themselves because I personally haven't worked with anybody directly other than being a witness to this one participant. But it's been used in clinics for helping people break those withdrawal symptoms and to kind of at times see the, the root cause of their addiction um, because aboga is also known to help reset some of the neurotransmitters in the brain. Um, now this is, that's about as much as I can say on that because just due to the fact that I've had much more experience with ayahuasca than I do with the boga, even though I've gone to Western Africa to be initiated. Mm. Okay. So it helps what I heard was that it helps to break the withdrawal symptoms and that it can actually assist in seeing the root problem or the root, the root cause or trigger or whatever to mm -hmm. the addiction itself. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. And. But I still want to add in with that, like with the medicine, like, for anybody that does work with a boga or ibogaine for that, just to remember it's in combination, it should always be used with in combination with support and like a structured treatment plan that focuses on long-term goals um, because a boga, a boga and ibogaine is a good short term to kind of help those changes start in the beginning. Mm. Yeah. And I, I'm glad that you said that actually too, because that was the other piece that I was going to say, which I think some people know, but I think with the use of these kinds of plant medicine, um, it's important probably to know that like you should do it in a way that you're supported. Mm -hmm. You know, you do it with a shaman who knows how to work with the medicine and how to bring you through the journey and the process. Right. Yeah. I would say definitely, um, with experienced facilitators um, and people that you trust. Um, it's, I would definitely recommend anybody that if they're seeking a provider or wanting to work with a provider, have some in-depth conversations with them. Um, since what your heart tells you, can you trust this person? Um, I think before anybody works with any of the medicines, fill out a health question uh, health history form because um, there are some med medications that you do not want to take before or during when you're working with certain plant medicines. So take it seriously and yeah, just trust your intuition and heart with who you want to work with. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And don't try and do it on your own. <laughs> right. Yeah. Set setting. Um, and center are some of the basic principles. What What are some of the basic principles? Well, uh, you want to be in a 
good set, like a, have a nice container um, where you feel safe and comfortable so you can go through your process. Um, you want to be with experienced people. So if you need assistance, you can have the assistance. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, that's the best I can put for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, when I was first looking into this, I didn't actually even know that piece, you know, that you should definitely do it with someone experienced and um, a guide, uh, which to me is, is such a cool way of approaching this kind of medicine because there is so much unknown and there's so much to know about it. Um, like you and I are just scratching the surface probably on what, you know, what this stuff is, how to work with it, how, you know, like what it can do for you. Um, but I feel like, you know, having somebody that really understands the medicine, having someone that really understands the journey and how to be with you energetically and spiritually is just like such a key piece in, you know, the, the, I don't like using the word success, but like the, the process itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just like, you know, with most things in your life, you typically, if you're going to buy a house, you research it, you look into it beforehand. You just don't necessarily jump in the deep end all the time, but every once in a while you might. Um, but with this, I'd say with anybody, just do your homework, do your research, um, check your intuition, trust your heart, and listen to your own own guidance um, when it comes to any of this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that advice was given to me too when I first started looking into more psychedelic plant medicines. Like, you know, if you're drawn to it, if your intuition tells you, you know, if it keeps showing up in your life, which for me, for whatever reason, ayahuasca has, um, to kind of pay attention to what your, your spirit and your heart are telling you and what you're ready for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So how has this changed your life? How has working with these two plant medicines changed your life? Um, <laughs> well, I kind of break it down into like, a before ayahuasca and then after ayahuasca, um, a boga just kind of, I feel like pushed me to another level, really kind of helped ground me a little bit, um, kind of show me a deeper level of certain issues that I was working on. And that's why I was kind of called to work with that medicine, because with all the different kind of plant medicines out there, they all carry a different frequency. Some might be good for a particular type of healing or might carry something that you need and you might need to go to something else for something else that you're working on. So with that in mind, I just want to say like not one of them is necessarily a cure-all for everything. This is just my opinion and how I've experienced the plant medicines. And recently um, I've been privileged enough to work with the Bufo toad from Mexico, which has 5-MeO-DMT, and it's, that's also been a page turner. It carries something different. So they all have their place. It's this wonderful kind of medicine cabinet that Mother Earth has given us. Mm, a medicine cabinet that Mother Earth has given us. I love that. That's such a, that's such a beautiful way to wrap up this episode. Um, because that, you know, the reason why I wanted to talk about plant medicine on the show, this show about love, um, is because that's really how I see it. You know, that's how I see plant medicine is this beautiful love that Mother Earth has to offer us, um, that can give us healing on such a profound holistic platform, you know, like that mind, body, and soul, mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's, that's really the reason why I wanted to talk about ayahuasca and, and and plant medicine in this way of, of this beautiful resource that mother earth has given us to connect with ourselves, to connect with her, to connect with the parts of us that need a little bit of love and that need some healing. Um, and I'm so grateful to you, Matthew. Thank you for all of your information and knowledge and wisdom around this beautiful 
healing resource. Um, this has been so much fun. And if you're looking to get in touch with Matthew, um, he's um, working in energy work. He does acupressure. He also can do consultations about psychedelic and plant medicine. So if you're looking to get in touch with him, um, you can email him at mwb at rightpaths.com. That's right, W-R-I-G-H-T, paths. Dot com, um, And his website's also in the works and it's beautiful. I actually just checked it out and it's um, rightpaths.com. Um, I'm so grateful, so grateful to have shared this space with you, Matthew. And I'm so grateful to all of you out there listening. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can go to my website, www.lovelivingholistics.com. You can also email me at emily at lovelivingholistics.com. Um, and if you have questions for me and want to, you know, also want me to connect you with Matthew, we can do that also. But um, thank you for sharing this space with us today. I hope that you got as much out of it as I did. I just loved this conversation. Um, if you're looking to go deeper in your own spiritual journey and your own healing, feel free to reach out to both Matthew and I. We are so happy to love and support you. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful evening and I wish you so much love in your life. Thank you for listening to Love Living Radio. Ignite your whole being with Emily Perkins. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific as Emily sheds a radiant light of love on the beauty and the power that resides within you. Discussing love in all its forms through conversations that provoke awareness, curiosity, and expansion, Emily shares the unlimited power of love. For more information or to listen to this show, visit lovelivingholistics.com. 